December 4th, 2017. Thank you for joining Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. Have you ever heard of Project Serpo? Well, Project Serpo is actually supposedly what Steven Spielberg based his entire movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind on. As we know, Close Encounters of the Third Kind was a financial and artistic success. It received so many accolades. It was nominated for full four Golden Globes, eight Academy Awards, and in fact, in 2007, the U.S. Library of Congress deemed the film culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant and chose it for preservation in the library for all time. So what does that have to do with Project Serpo? Well, according to the story, basically it's an ex it's an exchange program between Earth and planet Serpo, which lies in the Zeta Reticuli galaxy. Now, the Zeta Reticuli galaxy is a binary system, and it is supposedly where the gray aliens come from. And the gray aliens have been watching us for millions of years. And the planet, ex the planet Serpo Exchange Project traces its origins back to the famous Roswell incident. And we all know about Roswell in uh, New Mexico. And here you can see the actual paper, you know, because it came out right away saying that the Air Force captured a flying saucer on a ranch. No details were given. They actually came out and said that they had a flying saucer and then retracted it. And, you know, it happened so long ago back in the 40s that we, you know, pretty much are probably foggy on the whole thing you know most of us we just know that there was some sort of ufo crash and supposedly there were alien bodies and you know the government covered it up as they always do um, it basically it happened in the plains near socorro new mexico on may 31st 1947. the remains of the craft and one living et along with the bodies of his four dead companions were taken to roswell for analysis Meanwhile, the government reported to the American public after the initial statements by saying, no, 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 it was only weather balloons, the infamous weather balloons. As it turns out, there were actually two crashes. The remains of a second UFO were not found until about two years later. It appeared the two spacecraft had crashed into each other. By then, six bodies of dead aliens had decomposed and there wasn't much left of them to study. Even so, the remains were taken to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for evaluation and study. The Roswell e Living ET, named EBE-1 for extraterrestrial biological entity, was friendly and calm. He attempted to communicate, but spoke in tonal qualities the Americans could never really understand. EBE-1 seemed very intelligent and was able to quickly learn English. He informed his keepers that he was from a planet called Serpo and that it was about 40 light years away in the Zeta Reticuli galaxy. EBE-1 worked with the salvage communication device in his space vehicle trying to try and contact his home planet. He tried six times and all six times the communication system failed. In early 1952, EBE-1 sadly passed away without ever making contact with his home. His efforts were not unrewarded, however. In December 1952, the military made contact with the alien race referred to as the Ebens, who lived on the planet Serpo in the Zeta Reticuli galaxy, and communications transpired over the next nine years. During this time, an exchange program between the inhabitants of the two planets, Earth and Serpo, was created. The 12 American astronauts, 10 men and 2 women, were selected for the experiment. There were strict requirements in order for a person to join the program, and the training was rigorous. In short, the ones chosen for the journey could not be married or have children. And though it was not a requirement, having living family members like parents or siblings was not ideal. The assignment required that their unquestioned absence for 10 years be maintained. Nobody on Earth should be concerned about their whereabouts for the duration of the mission. 
The exchange was scheduled to occur at Holloman Air Force Base on April 24, 1964, with approval from J President John F. Kennedy. Two Eben spaceships landed as planned. A contingent of American government personnel greeted them. The 12 American astronauts prepared to embark on their adventure, but for some reason the exchange got postponed. The Ebens retrieved the remains of the dead comrades and left. The Ebens returned in July 1965 and picked up their passengers. Only one Eben stayed behind on Earth. So that sounds pretty, pretty wild, doesn't it? Well, it gets wilder. The Earth travelers took literally tons of supplies with them, including food, medicine, weapons, jeeps, and motorcycles. But during the trip, they ate only even food, which they heartily disliked because they said it tasted like paper. On the journey, they explored the spacecraft and were able to communicate with Earth. Unfortunately, one American had some kind of accident and died on the trip. They completed the 40-year light distance in only 10 months. When the spacecraft landed and Americans disembarked, they received quite a positive welcome. A large number of Ebens were present to greet them, and an Eben female spokesperson spoke to them in fluent English. The astronauts were overwhelmed with the brightness of the two suns. It was about 107 degrees, and they were all in great discomfort due to the heat. which remained a problem for them during their entire stay on the planet. Now, you might have seen these photos before, reconstructions of what the bodies looked like at the Roswell crash. You know, small, gray, humanoid beings. This is supposedly what EB-1 looked like. Large heads, tiny slit nose, slit mouth. And this is a representation of where they are in relation. And this is supposed to be a representation of the two suns. So the Americans expected to stay on Serpo for 10 years. As it turns out, due to their confusion with their calendars, they stayed 13 years. It was difficult to keep track of days and time since the plant had two suns and never got totally dark. One day on Eben lasted 40 hours as opposed to 24. During their stay on Serpo, the Americans learned what they could about the history of the Ebens. The population of Serpo at the time of the visit was about 650,000 and all were Ebens. There was no other race or species on the planet other than the Ebens and some animal-like creatures that were highly unusual and not like anything they had seen before. They learned about the Ebens' religious beliefs and technology. It seemed they lived fairly primitively for a culture that had such advanced technology. They had anti-gravity vehicles used for ground transportation. After a few years, the Americans moved to the northern part of the planet where it was cooler and they were able to grow food more to their liking. They had taken with them food to last for more than two years, and when it ran out, they had to eat the even food, which they never learned to like. Due to radiation exposure, two members of the expedition died on Serpo. Two Americans liked life on Serpo so much they decided to stay there. The remaining astronaut returned home in 78, and the government quarantined them for a year. During that time, they had many debriefings, which resulted in a 3,000-page report. They were then allowed to go back to their normal lives. Little is known about their lives since, except for the last surviving one died in 2002. There has been no communication with Ebens on Serpo since 85, so it is not known what happened to the Americans that chose to stay on the planet. In 2005, UFO discussion group leader and former government employee Victor Martinez received a series of emails from someone identified as Anonymous. Anonymous claimed to be a retired government employee, and he or she supplied much of the information about the exchange program. Through the years, the officials who are privy to this information had provided some knowledge that the reports are true. A transcript of a Ronald Reagan briefing by then-CIA Director William Casey was discovered. It was a top-secret meeting 
and the recording happened between March 6th and 8th, 1981. Casey provided Reagan with information about the exchange program. Reagan had quite a few questions that he was told would be answered later in additional briefing sessions. Unfortunately, we do not have a transcript of that session, so many questions are still left unanswered. Reagan mentioned his belief in UFOs and his high regard for Steven Spielberg from time to time. He even invited Spielberg to the White House for a special screening of the movie E.T. the Extraterrestrial in June of 1982. So is humanity ready to know the truth? Now may be the time for governments to release its information regarding UFOs, ETs, and the Evens, and the residents of the planet Serpo, including the information concerning the 12 brave Americans who participated in Project Serpo exchange program. Those who communicate with uh, the Blue Avians convey that only through fuel, full disclosure can we find peace in the world. So the Ebens are genetic scientists, and they have been here since supposedly pre-dinosaur times, at least 270 million years minimum, and probably even longer. They have seeded many other races throughout the galaxy, and that is what they do. They they see life and then they watch it and they sometimes allow it to be destroyed as what happened in the major cataclysm about 65 million years ago which was caused by an asteroid hitting the planet which wiped out most of the dinosaurs supposedly the Ebens took genetic material from every species that was alive at that time and located some of it some of them on other planets and have others in storage and continued the experiment but they chose not to let not to intervene and destroy the asteroid but instead let nature take its course and then that led to the rise of mammals and they have been creating hybrids there are so many dead ends on the the, the homo sapiens family tree uh, going back you know as far as we go that all look like just experiments when you get down to it um, genetic dead ends so these according to Raymond Fowler uh, who is the author of the Betty Andreasen affair which was a lady that was abducted and and when she was abducted she was taken by again gray aliens like this and when asked who they are when she asked them that they said we are the watchers and they simply create life change life and watch it and that's what they do and that's what they've done on earth for millions of years so I hope you guys found this interesting. Uh, I hope there's some good comments on this. Please leave comments below. Um, if you have anything you want to add, feel free um, for sure. I'd love to hear more about what you guys think. You know, the more we could all voice our opinions and the little things that we've heard here and there and put it all together, maybe we'll be able to get a better, clearer picture of what's going on here. I thank everybody for coming and joining me again at Evolutionary Energy Arts. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe and please share all this info. Share with as many as possible so we could really get more answers and get it out there so everybody is aware of what's going on. Thank you so much for joining me once again and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care.